Hi, welcome back to Buy It Forever. So this video, we're going to have a quick look at writing assembly code on a real ZX81. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this. One way is to encode uh, all your uh, assembly language into a REM statement on the first line. Now that, uh, the address of the first line is ZX81 basic, is it 16514. So when you execute that by uh, running either RAND user 16514 or a, a RAND, sorry, print user 16514. Uh, that'll execute the code uh, there. So that might look like kind of gobbledygook, but actually if we look in the 681 basic manual um, by Stephen Vickers, and Sinclair Research, like that. <laughs> um, in Appendix A, we've got the character set explained and the fact that he said eight assembly instructions encoded into a character on there. Uh, so what you can do is uh, write those characters in there. Some of them are unprintable, so you have to do other things like poking in values into addresses. It's uh, it's very time consuming. I'm not sure how anyone would do quite a big program using that, but it does work. Um, so if we actually just run this, so kind of explain what I've got there as well with the benefit of this manual. So we've got a graphics character, a little square in the top left. So that's LDBC, and then that's expecting a number after it. So actually what I've got is two spaces there. That represents two zeros. Um, so we've got, we're loading BC with zero, and then we've got a pound sign, which is down there, that's 12. So that's ink C, so it adds one to C. And then tan, that simply uh, decodes into a ret or a return. And what this will do is print out the return value from that routine. So you can just see, I don't know if you can see that there, uh, tan is ret. So if you run this, there we go, we get one. Yay! So just, we're just written an assembly program just using ZX81. So a better way of um, doing this, which is probably more productive, is to use an assembler. Uh, so what if I'm just using the ZX band here, bring up the menu. So I'm using this to load the ZX band to load and save uh, programs. It's just really the best way of doing it um, to make progress. So the method I've got is you load the assembler in. If we list that, so yeah, this so we've loaded the assembler in, and, and as you can see, this is a massive long uh, assembly program written as a purely as a, a REM statement. So you, can you imagine how long that would take to, to actually write? Um, the guys, I think this is uh, Bug Byte software. So they did that, they did this in 1981, and they must have brains the size of the planet, because it's just absolutely incredible. You could write that without an error. I guess what you'd do is you'd write the program, and then you'd sort of, after that, you'd hand encode it, and then type it in. Uh, you wouldn't just sit there and type this in. <laughs> uh, so that's line 10. If you if line, list line 20, this is kind of the... the user code part of it which actually executes that and what it does is it actually uh, copies all that assembly code up to there's a bit of the assembly code at the top of it which copies it up to address 28565 so to run the assembler effectively you run this program that installs the assembler and then after that you delete lines 10 20 and 30 and then just do go to 9000, which actually executes the assembler on your code, which you will have written in all the lines up to 9000. So if we just sort of run that now, so you see how it just runs, returns 9 slash 30, which just means it's, it's returned from line 30. Um, actually then, 
we don't need any of this now so we just delete that and we don't need line 20 or 30 so I'll just effectively delete them so now we've just got this this program and we actually in fact we don't need that either the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to load my program i'm going to do a new which will delete that program but bear in mind the memory at location 28565 still got the assembler in it so we're going to load load in um the code that i was writing so if we just do um and, and all this is zx expand you could do it with tape as well um but you know that that assumes that the tape load and saves working which mine wasn't unfortunately so i'm taking a bit of a shortcut here so i'm not this isn't as you would do it in 1981 obviously but um so I loaded this program as you can see we've still got the, the bit at the end which uh, calls the assembler but we started writing assembly code in rem statements as proper uh, what you would recognize as an 8 assembly code um, and then you can assemble this using go to 9000 it's now asking for an address it's actually put into fast mode as well a part of that corpus in fast mode that's why the fl screen flickers when you type a bit like a z80 sorry zx80 there we go so we've put in address 25000 it's it's assembled the code it shows you the machine code equivalent and the address that it's assembled to that's your assembly code um and when we when we actually list ignore the error by the way when we list it we still got our code there, we can carry on doing it, or we can uh, actually run it. So if we do, um, uh, so in this case we'll just do a RAND USR 25,000. That's to execute the code that we've assembled to there. And that's it. So this method could just use couple, the couple of ROM routines, print art and print character. So you print a graphics character at... Um, that location which is actually as you can see um, column 10 and row 5 are the two parameters that go into that uh, ROM routine call that's that's print art and then uh, that is the print uh, ROM routine address so yeah that's uh, one way of uh, basically writing assembly code in a more usable way you could probably do bigger programs like this and that's exactly what I'm, i was attempting to do so if i just look at what we've got there i've got this oh, i thought i had actually uh i thought i had space invaders in there but i haven't actually got it um it's a z8 z81 image so i can't actually load that unfortunately um i thought i'd copied that on so yeah, just uh, pause the recording there to copy the uh, version of Space Invaders that I'm writing, which actually is really at the start. I've, um, I've virtually got no, none of it working, but um, so I've copied that now onto uh, the SD card, so I can load that in. So I just do load. And it's well since actually that I uh, looked at this, but um, as you can see, uh, I started writing this. It's starting to get a little bit of a bigger program. Um, hang on, let's just list list thirty two. So it carries on all the way down actually to line ninety eight at the moment. Um, so, and one of the things you can do is you can set up sort of uh, spare memory locations that you can write to, and you know it's going to be at 16514. So, that's what I'm doing here. I've got like what I'm using for the Space Invader characters, which is WM. Um, 
I can't actually remember what I put at the end there. Just some other variables. Um, one cool thing is actually when you run this, because it's updated in this memory location, you can actually see what is in memory in those locations. Um, and what I'm trying to do is actually just print out the initial screen setup with rows of uh, the Space Invaders. So on each row, as you sort of probably know, that's where the game is, like the initial screen, and eventually get them to move side to side. Now, um, well, as I say, it's a while since I've picked this up, I started um, coding it, and I don't actually know what state it's in. So we'll try assembling it anyway and see what happens. So assemble it to 25,000. Um, and you see, you just keep pressing new line until you get error, and that's like basically listed through the assembly code. Um, so now if we, we don't need to do list again, but we can just, I think, uh, I thought I had a shortcut here, but I'll just do rand, um, use the 25,000 to run it, see what happens, probably crash. Yeah, that's what I thought I briefly showed, initial bit of it, um, printing the W and M's out, and then it's just crashed. So yeah, uh, that's definitely work in progress. Um, but hopefully at some point I'll get something that works. <laughs> and of course, uh, just reset there. Of course, yeah, because it's assembly code, when it crashes, it just basically wipes out the whole system, so you can't really do anything, you have to reset. Um, that's the, the difference really between writing this code on the real ZX81 and if you were doing it in Notepad++ and using Assembler on a PC, so much easier, but um, I just thought for the realistic experience, even though I'm using ZX Expand, I might try it this way. Anyway, I've uh, probably gone on for too long in this video, so if anyone's still watching, um, thanks for watching and um, hopefully we'll continue this in, the, in a future video. Bye for now.